In this video, I want to give you a quick and simple introduction into Law of Sines. The Law of Sines formula helps us to solve triangles like this one. And here's the formula. Sine of angle A over side A is equal to sine of angle B over side B, and that's equal to sine of angle C over side C. The capital letters represent the angles the lowercase letters represent the sides. So across angle B is side B, across angle C is side C, and across angle A is side A, which means lowercase a is 8. Now one of the first things we need to do is calculate angle C, because the three angles of a triangle must add up to 180. So angle C is going to be 180 minus 53 minus 62 and so this is going to be 65 degrees so now that we have angle C we can calculate side B or side C let's start with side B so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the first two parts of the sine the law of sines formula. Because I know angle A, I know side A, I know angle B, but I don't know side B. So angle A is 53, side A is 8, angle B is 62, and we need to calculate the value of lowercase b. So make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Because if it's in radian mode, uh, you might get something else. So let's cross multiply first. So we're going to have 8 times sine of 62 degrees. And that's going to equal B times sine of 53 degrees. So to get B by itself, we need to divide both sides by sine of 53. So 8 times sine 62 divided by sine 53, that is equal to 8.84. So that's our B value. Now let's calculate side C. So I'm going to use the first part of the law of science formula, and I'm going to set it equal to the third part. So angle A is still 53, side A is 8. Angle C is 65, side C is what we're looking for. So just like before, we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to have 8 times sine of 65 degrees, and that is going to equal to C times sine of 53 degrees. And now let's divide both sides by sine 53. So side C is going to equal 8 times sine 65 divided by sine 53. And so you should get 9.08 which I'm going to write it here. Now, a quick way that you could check your answers to see if it makes sense is that the sides that are across a larger angle, those sides should be longer. So for instance, angle A is the smallest angle. So therefore, side A should be the shortest angle. Angle C is the largest angle, so therefore side C should be the longest side. And that's just a quick way to make sure if, I mean, to test to see if your answers make sense. Now let's work on another problem that is quite different than the first one. If you want to try it, feel free to pause the video. So in the other example, we were given two angles and a side. In this example, we're given two sides and one angle. Now we know angle A 
and side A. Side A is 6. We're given side B, but we don't know angle B, and we know nothing of C. So the first thing we need to do is calculate angle B. So we're going to use the first two part, I mean the first two parts rather, of the law of sines formula. So sine of angle A over side A is equal to sine of angle B over side B. So angle A is 40, side A is 6. We're looking for angle B and side B is 8. Now let's cross multiply. Actually, instead of cross multiplying, let's just multiply both sides by 8. That's going to be easier. So we get that sine B is, let's plug this in, it's going to be 8 times sine of 40 divided by 6. So sine of B is 0 0.85705. Now we need to calculate the value of angle B. To do that, we need to take the inverse sign of both sides. And so it's going to turn out that angle B is going to be the inverse sign or the arc sign of 0 0.85705. And so that's how you can calculate the angle for these types of problems. You need to use the inverse sine function. So make sure your calculator is in degree mode, by the way. If you type in inverse or arc sine of 0 0.85705, you should get 58.987. I mean, you could round that to 58.99, which is approximately 59 degrees. So that's a, a good approximation for this example. Now, something that you need to pay attention to is that when you calculate the angle, it's possible that you can get another angle. For instance, sine of 58.987, if you were to plug that in, you would get 0 0.85705. And there's a reason why I'm showing you this because there's another angle that can give you that same result. And that angle is complementary to the first one. To find the other angle, subtract this angle from 180. So if you were to plug in 180 minus 58.987, you would get the angle 121.013. Now, if you plug this into your calculator, sine 121.013, it will also give you 0 0.85705. Thus, when you take the arc sine when dealing with the law of sines formula, you can get two possible answers. The first answer that your calculator gives you, and then 180 minus that answer. So what we need to do is draw two triangles with both possible values of B. So this is angle A, B, and C. Now the information that we already had will be the same. A is 6, B is 8. So that's not going to change. The only thing that changes at this point is angle B which we're going to use a rounded value of 121 degrees. Now, here's how you know if the second triangle is possible. We know that the three angles of a triangle must add to 180. So if these two angles exceed 180, you know that the second triangle is not possible. But in this example, they do not exceed 180. So the second triangle is possible for this example. Now, let's go ahead and finish solving these two triangles. So let's begin by calculating angle C for both of them. In the first triangle, angle C is going to be 180 minus 40 minus 59. And so we're going to get 81 degrees. For the second triangle, it's going to be 180 minus 40 minus 121. 
and thus we're going to get 19 degrees. The last thing we need to solve for is side C in both triangles. So we're going to use this formula. Sine A over A is equal to sine C over C. The reason why I'm not using sine B over B because these are rounded values and they will slightly affect the value of C. Whereas the values for angle A and side A, those are exact values. So focusing on the triangle on the left. By the way, let's rearrange uh, this formula to get C. If we cross multiply, it's going to be C times sine A is equal to A times sine C. And if we divide both sides by sine A, we'll get that C is A times sine angle C divided by sine A. So for the first triangle, A is 6, angle C is 81, and angle A is 40. Thus we have 6 times sine 81 divided by sine 40. And so it's 9.22 for the first triangle. For the second triangle, A is still 6, but angle C is different. Angle C is 19 degrees. Sine A is still the same. So it's going to be 6 times sine 19 divided by sine 40. And so C is going to be 3.04 for the second triangle. So note that the largest angle is across the longest side. And here we see that the shortest angle is across the shortest side. The same is true for the second triangle. 121 is the largest angle. 8 is the longest side. 19 is the smallest angle. So C, the 3.04, that's going to be the shortest side. Thus, that's it for this video. So now you know how to use the law of sines formula to solve for these types of triangles.